Um, if there's anything that I can help you guys with today, I'm here for you guys to pick my brain. Um, I have some stroke. I'm going in one direction, but turning the other direction is a flop. Many leaves, and for whatever reason, pumpkins are my challenge. Pumpkins? <laughs> I have lots of tricks for, for things like that. And some of them, you know, um, it takes some base coating and then you can always highlight with one color to get your shadowing in. Um, yeah, I'm a perfectionist too, big time. And um, sometimes that could be definitely our worst enemy is just trying to uh, beat yourself up too much about uh, getting everything perfect. You know, we're not going to be Donna overnight. Uh, I've been working at this since 2005, I think, uh, really strongly, pushing myself through the levels and pushing myself with as many projects as I can jump on uh, with Donna to learn with her and, um, and then bumping myself through oversized and now I'm doing drawing and design, you know, so I'm always pushing myself to keep uh, learning more, you know, it's the more you do, the more you're, you're going to get it. and. I think uh, I found a really cool little joke the other day about procrastination and it was called uh, Procasta Learning and I thought it was so, so me. Like I spent so many hours on YouTube watching everything I could find for free and seeing, okay, if I can just find that one magic trick to, to make me understand how to do it. Cause I would try a couple times and I get frustrated and I put it down and then I watch about a hundred more videos, you know? So I was just never really feeling confident to, to try any real projects. I just kept playing around. I was playing around on nails for a long time, but you know, when you do something really that tiny, you can't do the same thing that we do big. So this is a uh, part of the challenges that I had to like relearn everything on a, on a bigger scale. And then a, the detail and getting more shading in and getting that extra little bump into things, you know, so we slowly evolve, you know, evolve through the process, but we all have to start somewhere, right? So um, this is where I, I kind of been building my programs to, to help people, you know, with beginning steps. And um, some of you have the intro to one stroke program that I designed. And um, I used to have it all separately and, you know, so you can just take it as you wanted to. And, um, but then I just went through an eight week challenge with a bunch of people and I learned a lot. I just learned so much about, um, you know, how people learn and, and some people thought it was too much or they just didn't have time to keep up with the loads and loads of practice that I give you. And I'm thinking more is better, right? So, you know, I've tried to give you as much as possible in, um, in the program so that, you know, you can, you can get the maximum out of me. Like, you know, everything I can possibly think of in a daisy stroke is in course number four. And then everything I could possibly think about to bump you into a shell stroke, you know, all the different varieties, you know, open shells, closed shells, like I give you everything in this program. It's really, really packed full. And um, sometimes people don't have time to get through it or it's taking them longer. And it doesn't matter really how long it takes you to, to get through it. It just get through it, like do a little at a time. And I've also found that, you know, a lot of people really love the baby steps that I have. I have all the course videos all in separate little sections so that you, it's doable. You can get those little wins and then, you know, bump yourself up slowly, a little, little, little at a time. And, um, and then you'll get it, right? So still, you know, even people with the program, you know, they still might be having problems. And then I have a half hour uh, Zoom time that you can have for me free. You can meet with me one-on-one -on -one with the program and we can cover anything that you're having problems with to, um, to, to you know, get you right on the right path again. So yeah, Doris is, uh, uh, she loves it. She's part of my program, one of my VIPs. So you guys are all kind of very important painters to me, but you know, technically my VIPs are the ones that have jumped on this intro program. And some of you, you know, been around with me uh, for a long time, like Miss Dorothy. And she's a Southpaw, by the way. So a lot of people that are, uh, you'll see on Donna's site, a lot of times left-handed people have a hard time. And I think I'm a little ambidextrous because my mother's left-handed and my husband's left-handed and I'm a hairdresser so or retired. And I, I'm used to doing things with both hands. So 
maybe I have the lexic a little bit and I can see both sides of the story or something. I don't know, but you know, I was able to, I'm able to see that there is more than one way of doing things. And the more you push yourself to play with in all those directions, because I find a lot of people are doing um, like a very repetitive motion and they're keep flipping their canvas to do the stroke, to do that full circle of the flower. And then, you know, you find yourself being like a photocopier, you end up doing the exact same stroke. So I've got lots of little tricks to, to help you flip that petal in different directions and, and depending on if you start at the top or the bottom or the, you know, the right side, the left side, work your way down, it really helps to flip that illusion of the is the flower turning this way or that way or this you know in different directions which you know once we get the basic flower down now we want to really you know start playing around with flipping it in different directions and then flipping the petals so they're, they're curlier and and there's all kinds of different wiggles and dances that i like to call them dances because you know once you really get into the groove you feel like you're dancing with your brush so that's my little analogy about um brush um yeah and you know doris it's gonna take some people longer it depends on how much time you put in how many strokes you do like i always joke that you need to do that stroke 200 times before you get that muscle memory getting in there and um you know and then bending it and playing with it and twisting it and making it look you know different directions and and then of course just adding different colors is going to make it look a little bit different too with uh depending how dark and how light you choose like if you choose a medium pink you're not going to get that real dimension going on so i always like to use the darkest colors possible with my lightest colors possible and then you can really play with that gradient and get a nice range inside that stroke a little bit more you know seeing all the things that people were challenged with um the things that they tend to try to do but you know you got to make those mistakes too so um you know that's all part of the play and the learning and, and getting it you know i want to try and do maybe something a little bit smaller um a little bit more doable and also because now that i have this complete program i want to complement that so if you're you know really crazy and you really want all that extra practice then you know you're going to definitely still want to jump on that um but yeah i'm, I'm actually um i got some ideas about a boot camp and I'm thinking just a five week boat boot camp this week, this time. And it's going to be, you know, a little bit more doable. It's going to be great for beginners. It's going to be great to also pick my brain again. And what I want to do is um, do it here in Zoom. And I'm hoping that you guys can flip your camera down. Okay. You can hopefully get a little tiny little gorilla tripod somewhere and you got a webcam and i've got actually a good webcam i put in the units now the one i use and so if you're looking for a good one on amazon um that's the one that i use right now you're looking at me um through and um make sure you get yourself a little tripod and then you know you're going to be able to make sure that you have it access down so if you're having a hard time loading your brush then I want to be able to see that happening so that I can see, oh no, you're not pushing hard enough. Because some people don't realize that, or they're pushing, you know, too hard or they're too messy or they're not staying focused or, you know, there's a lot of little things that I'm very anal about um, that keeps me directed. And um, so if I'm able to see you in action and then over on that paper, yeah, these are my little side notes. I want to make sure I remember everything. <laughs> You know, and then I can really see you working on that paper. I can help you way more. Like I'm right there holding your hand. So that's my idea of um, trying to be there for you guys a little bit more. Yeah, so I do have um, lots of little tricks and tips that I've learned through the years, playing around with different mediums. I love multimedia. And like I said, I've done my own self-learning before I met Donna. So I've got a lot of wacky ways of doing things and um so yeah i like to share them and so now i pre-record all my my projects so they're there for you to do whenever you want because they're a little bit different than the practice courses and then some of my practice my projects have like a huge practice area with the project so i'm going to walk you through my site uh, a little bit 
And then I just want to kind of show you guys around a little bit because it is really different. And I'm finding people are like, well, where is everything? And how do I access it? And, you know, what is it that I really get? With the Intro to One Stroke program, it's a large program. It's a, like there's courses and then there's programs. Okay, so the Intro to One Stroke program is actually in like 10 sections. Okay, so I've got the first five courses here that are your main structure of the program. And then I have a bonus project here as well that you see behind me. And then I also have all the lives here from the frequently asked questions that we did through the eight week challenge. Okay, so what to expect in the course, a little recap on course number one, how to control the shakes, uh, you know, again, more about the ribbon that I used around this project. And, the, my hack number six is actually where this came from is when we were doing the live there um more information about the teardrop and lilac you know so it goes on and on and on and on there's so many videos and you can watch them all here okay so this is uh some people have neon pink and some have bright pink and i actually show you okay, so. the uh the difference between the two pinks and so i'm always giving you alter uh, colors to use or how to create colors and I love playing around with color theory uh, and making my own colors so basically yeah the intro to one stroke has its own menu and it has all the courses here go through and um, then we also have another bonus project here where I uh, wildflowers and bugs paint project and it's got a huge section with a lot of little mini designs that are included in the wildflower and okay, so the wildflower practice alone has got loads and loads and loads of practice okay so I think that one's got like 10 different parts Okay, so you have all your dandelion here, you have your queen ants here, everything is all separate. So then that way, you know, you can concentrate on one flower at a time, right? Once you've got the stroke work mastered, then you can start working on a bunch of different little ones there. Okay, so if you've got the one uh, intro to one stroke program, you get one free session. And my system is all set up for you to be able to come and click on a day that you want okay i want two o'clock and then i'm gonna click next and then it'll easily it'll tell you that you have remaining sessions left like there's one that comes with your uh with your intro program and when you book it it'll be free for you because you have it in the bank you have you know sessions there and then you can add it to your google and you know then on that time and date you go into your email and then you'll be able to click on that link to join the Zoom meeting and we'll be there together. And uh, you can pick my brain privately on any of the, uh, the practice that you can do. And all you have to do is be a site member. Okay, so to see all that, you, it'll prompt you. You can use your Facebook, you can use your Google, you can put your own email and put a password in. Um, but whatever you choose the very first time, you have to use the same time, same thing every time. Okay, because I have a couple of people that have two different emails in there now because they use different emails every time. But yeah, it just it's very easy. Just be a site member and it doesn't cost you anything to be a site member and you can still see all my free resources. But you do have to, you know, pay for the particular programs that you want to be able to have those pages open for you. So once you, you know, get that program or that course, then when you come back to my site, as soon as you click on it, it'll open for you automatically. If you haven't paid for it, it'll prompt you to pay for it. You know, how can I help you guys? You know, I want to be here for you guys and I want to give you some options. And then again, with the boot camp, you know, we're going to meet on Zoom. You guys are going to get a re recording. So if there's a one day that you can't meet out of the five weeks, you can always get the recording after and then um, catch up with whatever you missed out on, on the little assignments that I'm going to come up with. And it's going to be like a, a fast track, it's going to be, you know, a little bit lighter assignments and we're going to do them together on Zoom. And again, it's going to be focused by the course. So everything we learn in course number one, we're going to focus on day one. Then we're going to bump into course number two, 
So everything you can do with a one stroke leaf and a teardrop stroke. Then we're gonna do number three, we're gonna do all the liner play. Okay, so I've got a lot of fun assignments there. And I'm gonna show you, you know, a few um, practice sheets as well to go with it. And um, you guys can get them printed off, okay? Um, if you're all on Messenger, I can do a group Messenger, okay? To remind you guys, ask questions in there, and we're gonna be all together in the group Messenger. So we can type things all together and we'll all see it, okay? And then, so that's what I'd like to set up with uh, the group Messenger. And then um, I'll be able to shoot you guys the practice sheets that if, when I'm working that night and I show you some things and whatever my page looks like, I will scan it and I'll send it to you in the group messenger. Okay, so we can keep in, in the loop a little bit over there. You know, some people love my program by itself. They like working independently. They, they're doing great. They don't need any help. Uh, a lot of my VIPs have, have done it before that way. And then of course, they're always sending me stuff in Messenger as well, the pictures of their work, which is wonderful. I like that. You know, send me your homework. And then I can see by your stroke work uh, how you're doing. But if, uh, if you need even more help and you want me to see what you're doing, then we need to get on Zoom. And either you're gonna use up that half hour or you're going to um, jump on a boot camp. So now that I'm officially elite, um, I'm really going nuts. I'm full plower, full push. I'm 100% um, of my time. I'm totally retired now. So this is my new retirement job. And um, yeah, I'm really, really, really excited. So I, just to show you guys, for the ones that haven't been here, okay, this is my special offer. I got fancy today and I made a special little uh Thing so I can talk about it. You guys can actually see what I'm offering right now. And I had some beta prices going on because these were all brand new and I only had a few people jump on them and they were testing them and I wasn't really launching them and advertising them like I am now. Okay, because I was a little bit, you know, are they going to like it? Is Are they going to get something out of it? I was really worried, you know. So now I know they work. I know it works for you. And... Um, so each of those courses are now all in a, this is all of the one program, right? So you got five courses, which I was selling $25 each at beta prices, which I could probably get more for. And this is Canadian, by the way. So you guys in the States, you're gonna actually pay cheaper with the dollar change, right? Um, my program is in Canadian dollars, but it'll charge you in American, okay? So don't worry about that. So there's $125 there that people were investing. And then I have just added a bonus project, the one that's behind me. And then the live Q and A's are priceless. And then again, the bugs is of course all by itself. That could be easily $100 or $25. And then same with the practice course because the large course that it is, I was selling that one for 35 by itself. And then the paint party, um, but again, that's another $25. So that's like $235 that I could easily charge for this program. And I've got, since I relaunched, I, I put it at $97 just as a, a great, you know, intro price. So it's like a heck of a deal right here just to jump on that, you know, uh, individual program and uh, work on your own, okay? So I wanna do the boot camp, all right? So again, usually we, you know, even Donna charges how much for each zoom that she does right she has a monthly deal for about a hundred dollars or something like that so i'm going to do five of them you know so even if i asked 25 dollars, i'd be like uh, you know, 135 so on promotion i like 97 that's my new favorite number um you know i'm going to have that for 97 dollars as well so you can jump on the five courses right you don't need to jump on this if you don't want to you can just jump on the boot camp but I do have another promotion that if you do jump on the intro program or you already have it, my system will recognize if you already have it. So as soon as you come to the link, it's going to already show you that you have 40% off the bootcamp. Okay. So it's $97 as it is. But if you do buy this, then this will be 40% off. You can register right here. And you'll see that on my system, it tells me I already have the intro program. So right there, there's a little check mark saying purchased. That means I already bought it for those who already bought it. 
So automatically, all you have to do, my system, for some reason, I can't get rid of this little thing because only you only want one, right? So why doesn't it let me? But it won't. So you have to actually press plus one. And you'll see that you get you save another forty dollars here, and then the boot camp is only going to cost you five uh, fifty eight twenty. Okay, because it shows that you already have the intro to one stroke program. Does that sound easy enough for everybody? Okay, so like I said, there's so many things that, you know that you can do. If you guys want to see this one a little bit closer. Okay, so this is the bonus project that we did. So every course is in here. So we did course number one, and then we did, you know, the background and everything. And then we did started doing the ribbon. Some people were a little bit challenged with that one because it is almost like a shell stroke. So I was recommending some people to come back to it, you know, <laughs> just do it, you know, keep going with the stuff you feel comfortable with. And then by the time you get to course number five, then you'll definitely be able to add the, the ribbon around the outside. But, you know, there's parts of course number two, three, four, five, all of them are in here. Okay, so, and then the same with the uh, the wildflowers, it all utilizes all the courses, all the things that you learned. And uh, like I said, I'd love to show you something. Yeah, I want to paint something with you guys tonight. Luke episode's fun. Um, uh, and leaves, what kind of leaves? Full leaves, one stroke leaves, flippy leaves. I have an advanced lead course that has, it's packed, packed full of lead practice. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, uh, curling and flipping leaves. Yes, that's a fun one. You want me to play with some flipping leaves? Okay, I'll do that. This is in the advanced course of the uh, advancing your leaves. I don't really want to call it advancing, advanced, because you don't have to be advanced to take it you can uh it's you're gonna work your way up right okay so we'll start off with some green um actually got thicket here all right and then we definitely need some white Okay, so it's just that little extra little bit to give it some. And if you guys are ordering now, we're getting new labels, eh, for plaid. So if you get new floating medium. I'm going to open this one. They're going to look a little different. So when you're practicing on paper, if you want to check out one of my hacks, I talk about what to practice on too. Okay, so you guys got to check out my hacks if you haven't seen them, because there's lots of little tips in there too. So I got them all in the uh, units now. On Facebook, I just organized my Facebook, so all the good posts and all the things that are interesting to, to know that you might be interested in is all in the units now on my group. So I've really been doing a lot of housekeeping there. So when we're doing the backflips of these leaves, we really want to make sure that we have a lot of dark. So we really want to have that three-quarter gradient. So you can see how I just went right into my pile and scooped up a good amount just to get in there. Okay, but a lot of times just lay your brush right over flat so that you're picking it up high. So a lot of people just dip the little corners and then they go back four or five times. And I find that's almost like a waste of time, right? So you can actually dip your brush a little bit more sideways and really get it loaded, get to the point, right? And make sure that you have that right up there so you get like a three quarter. And then I also like to add just a little bit of white in there just to brighten that lime green up a little bit but not too much because i really want to be able to have that third color pop up and if you guys see me before a lot of times if i get paint running away on me i'll actually scoop it up and put it back where i want it okay. so when we do these back flips okay they basically Or like your shell movements, okay? 
but you're almost going to do like a stop and back up movement. Okay. So if you've got to be really comfortable too with your shell strokes. And what I like to do is to get that coverage going. Okay. So we're going to make our one side of the leaf. Okay, which is a shell leaf. This is what I call a shell leaf, right? So when you have that pivot point, always going back into the center, and then you do your one stroke leaf to come out. Okay, so when you're doing these back wiggle flippy leaves, there's nothing wrong with, you know, doing a leaf all the way down, right? There's some of my leaves, I do pansy leaves that are like that, and then they don't even have a point. They go right around, and then they're a little bit softer, and then they come right around all the way. So there's a lot of different leaves out there that you can mimic, right? So with the, and then again, this is more what I'd like to do is just carry that down. Doing that wiggle and backflip is that you have to kind of keep going, right? and then just a small little one stroke leaf at the end okay so what i like to do too is tip my white and when i tip my white i don't do a lot of blending i just do it at the last minute i just pick up a little bit and do a couple spots just to work that in okay and then when i go over it the second time then i can get more coverage and this is where i usually do about three and then I just kind of rock that back and then come down and around it and then do a couple more little wiggles and then again you're squishing that brush back and then coming through right and you did you see that so you're really I did this right in my class you'll see in the recording <laughs> it made sense Okay, so you're really pushing down on that corner and you're rocking that brush down and back and around, but that corner is like squished around. You see that S movement that I made? So you're slowly coming down, coming back, and then going back into your directions again. <laughs> I love painting on myself. For some reason, that was what really got a couple of people so you see what happened here i went and got a little crazy i'm gonna lose my i kind of did this on purpose because i wanted to show you guys that you're gonna lose your gradient and you want to keep that dark as long as dark as the bottle as because it comes out right so you just gotta really try to keep focused and i like to lean my hand on somewhere so then that way i'm just moving my wrist back and forth to blend that you're not up in the air floating and I'm really kind of close to the top of my furrow. I'm holding my brush. I want to really hold on to it good. I'm not holding it all the way back here. And I'm not holding it too close. So it's about right, right along those little ridge lines. It gives you a nice little spot to kind of to give you a little bit more of a grip. And that's exactly about where I am when I'm holding on to my brush. Okay. So you definitely want to play around with your gradients, right? I always suggest to practice, make sure that you've got that three quarter and then you're going to tip that little bit of a uh, weight and then go over your stroke the second time and you will see, again, make sure you're moving up high enough that you're covering that exact same. Sometimes I'll let it dry and then go back and then I'll add the highlight to it after. Okay, so just get that color going. All right, get that shell stroke going, pretend that's pink and white, you know, to make a flower petal, right? And if it's dry, then that's when it's like, okay, where do I need that floating medium? Just on the light side to get that coverage going, okay? Then I'll go and do a bunch of different flowers and then I'll come back to it when it's dry and you'll get a much better coverage and it won't be so wishy-washy too. I find if you do too much, keep adding paint, it just keeps getting too thick, too thick and it'll get wishy-washy on you as well okay. so then when i do the other side of my leaf i'll also show you a couple flowers and you know so you're 
doing things a little differently when you're doing it upside down, right? And you can see that because I don't have the white there, it's not standing out very much. Okay, so now I add let me just a titch more white. It's a big leaf. So I have to make sure I have a lot. And then I'm rocking up. Okay, you can just do one on one side, two on the other side. You don't have to make them totally mirror image. Right? And then you're going to use your chisel. And what I always do is dark to dark. So if you're wondering, you know, which way do I flip my brush? As long as you keep dark to dark, or if you made your leaf, you know, with the light in the middle and the dark on the end, then it'll be light to light, right? So you go light to light, flick through. Dark to dark, flick through, okay? So when you do that, your light will come through your leaf and you'll be able to see the vein a lot better into the light, darker leaf. Okay, so that's my little trick to remember just dark to dark or light to light and that'll guide you on the direction which way do I flick that leaf in. Okay. So let me show you uh, what I was talking about those petals. Doing it nice and big with a three-quarter brush just so you guys can really see it well. But I always suggest that you practice with every brush size. Do the exact same thing with your practice with one brush size. Oh, I made it backwards. That's okay, it's dry anyways. Okay, so again, oh, I'm right into my floating medium. And again, three quarters is most of the time what we're going to do a lot of our work with. So the direction, okay, we always do like a gingerbread man kind of look. Okay, so this is your closed shell. It's going to have a pivot point always taking you right back to the same place. Okay, and I do go a lot slower in the course, and I will go a lot slower in the boot camp. Okay, so I'm going to force myself to go in the different directions, okay? I'm just going to do this really quickly just to kind of show you guys. Now, when I do it in the other direction, which it does take some practice, and lefties can do this one here, but they still got to practice the right way. Okay, so I always call it right-handed and left-handed strokes because I feel like the right left-handed people can do this way easier and right people can do this way, right? So really doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, you know, you still got to practice and it's just about leaning your brush in that direction to get it started. Okay. So when you do from top to bottom, work your way under, you can give yourself that little flick too at the bottom. If you start at, and you try to do it from bottom to up, it's going to force the eye to come and flick that petal down. Okay, so that's okay if you want your flower to look like it's coming, looking down, right? Then you're going to do the same thing on this side, right? And then you finish it and that'll help bring your flower to look down. But if you want your flower to look up, like most of them do, to the sun, when you start at the top and work your way down, it'll give you that illusion that it goes up. And then on the other side, the same thing, working from the top to the bottom. Then you're going to work from the top to the bottom. And again, over here, and I really try not to move my paper too much. Okay, I really try to force myself. Okay, so if, if you're a beginner and you're brand new at this, yes, definitely keep practicing those strokes and make those flowers however you can make them look pretty. And if you have to go like this in the beginning and keep moving your page, and keep moving your page, you know, they're still going to be very, very pretty flowers. 
okay but once you start getting to that level of being comfortable with how many how big they have to be you know then you're going to be able to really play and force yourself because it'll actually put that extra little dance in your step when you every lead every pedal will look a little bit unique and look really really like that's fun Okay, so I did want to show you guys while we're talking about shell strokes. Okay, so I do have lots of really fun things in my program. And this is some extra practice where I make you actually do it with different colors. So that way you're making yourself a little color chart. And if you know about our purples, we have like six of them. And sometimes you're like, well, what purple is more blue? What purple is more uh, reddish tones? You know, like we have so many different purples. So this was a great little exercise here too, to really show you, you know, what these purple pur purples look like. Perfect purple, violet pansy, you know, we and uh, so we do have lavender and whatever ones, right? Our Parisian dioxin you know all of our ranges of the most varieties that especially for pansies right so in my course number five i have 11 different centers that you can play with so it gives you lots and lots of uh, shell stroke practice and then we get to play with some different centers as well okay so i'll show you how to do all those centers in course number five okay so again, if you want to jump on this program, I gave you lots and lots and lots. These are just, just some of the practice sheets from the Daisy class. Okay, so we're, I really focus you on direction too, not just how to do a Daisy stroke. It's there's, it's like an advanced course that it leads you into a little bit at a time. And of course, all you know, loads of pages of practice. And this is going to really help force you to make those leaves upside down in different directions. Don't keep changing your, your paper. It's there. It's there to jump on right now. If you guys want to register for, I'm planning on it for uh, in two weeks from now. There we go.